In this video, I'm going to create a zoo with only one animal in Zoo Tycoon. Normally, Zoo Tycoon is supposed to be about creating a profitable and successful exhibition of a variety of animal species from all over the world. But what if I told you that it's possible to create a thriving zoo and even max out the game's 1,000 guest limit with only a single animal? I wanted to see if I could try this, so I looked around and it turns out another really amazing YouTuber I was already a huge fan of named Marcel Vos already tried this. Definitely check him out after this since his channel is actually one of my favorites and his ideas are just so wonderful and baffling. But for the life of me, I had to know, how far could a zoo go with only one animal? And so it began in January of year one. There are many animals in Zoo Tycoon, but one of the most easily satisfied among them is Thompson's Gazelle. While most exhibits require foliage, fresh water, and rocks, Thompson's Gazelle appears to be overjoyed, inhabiting a simple two-by-one enclosure, floored by only two tiles of savanna grass. One tile for it to sit upon, and the other to contain its diet of yet even more savanna grass. If we don't have any animals at our zoo, people won't come. So once we had the one gazelle, people entered the pitiful zoo. True to form, and sure enough, Thompson's gazelle was not only satisfied, but overjoyed with our one staff member, the zookeeper, depositing hay on its exhibit floor and collecting its excrement from the tile it inhabited. And what about the guests? So guests in Zoo Tycoon will feel the same level of happiness as your animals feel. So if you have sad animals, your guests will feel sad, leading to lower ratings, fewer guests, and less money. It's a popular misconception because it says so in the instructions, that guests need multiple exhibits. They don't. If guests just see one really happy animal, and they manage to get a good look at it, they'll be totally happy with the zoo, <laughs> leading to, yes, that's right, higher ratings, more guests, and more money. And since it's really expensive to have a lot of animals manage their happiness, and in turn satisfy your guests, it turns out that literally one gazelle is an incredibly overpowered zoo strategy. And it was enough to satisfy hundreds of people, elbowing past one another for a glimpse at the stupidly happy gazelle. There are four types of guests in Zoo Tycoon. Man, woman, boy, and girl. They each can see in a square around them of 10 by 10 squares, and they enter the zoo at 75% happiness. So every moment that our guests were standing in the zoo for the first few months, their happiness was rising, as they remained in sight of the happiest gazelle. But they also had needs. Drinking, eating, defecating, and sitting down. If you manage to satisfy all those needs, your guests will have enough time to keep looking at the gazelle and get even happier and happier until they have to leave the zoo eventually and tell more of their friends to come. Our zoo didn't really get above 20 guests or so until we built a bench and a bathroom and some food and drink stalls to placate them. Still, even that wasn't enough and I was confused why my zoo wasn't getting any more guests. So I went back and learned from Marcel's amazing video that our guests secretly have another need that they don't even tell you about. They need some form of recreation. Normally it'd be a boat hire or something more elaborate, but it turns out that just having one swing set in your zoo is literally all that your guests need to get even happier inside of the zoo. Swing set built, sure enough, park entrances exploded overnight, and hundreds more guests poured into the zoo over the course of the next two years to get happier by standing near the swing set and gazing upon the happiest gazelle. As with my last zoo in Zoo Tycoon, I found that the Prairie Dog Cafe was once again, clearly, the best restaurant in the entire game. An obnoxious and distasteful Mexican cantina loudly advertised by a sombrero-clad rodent tempted our guests with opportunities at drinking, and eating, and defecation, and sitting down, all in one place. So I deleted the drink stalls, the food stalls, the bathroom, and the benches. But not the swing set, because people liked the swing set. Speaking of which, sometimes people would just escape from the fenced area and go for a ride on it. This is still puzzling to me. Naturally, the best solution to prevent my guests from running amok was to build a moat to trap them inside of the square area where I wanted them to stand. This solution was a success. People were unable to escape. So as far as their challenge is concerned, you're supposed to be able to get up to a maximum of 1,000 guests in the base game without altering the game files. But we were still stuck around 500 or 600, so I lowered the price of entry at the Prairie Dog Cafe. After all, the zoo was already immensely profitable, generating hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. And I was willing to earn less money in the short run if it meant attracting more guests. So I slashed prices and left my computer running while I did some laundry, which led to a modest increase of maybe 50 or 60 guests after a few months. But still the same thing. Not that many more people came in. And so I began to grow frustrated and confused. Why was my zoo unable to attract more guests, unlike Marcel's? 
So I traced it back to the source and began surveying my guests' thoughts and opinions about the zoo. How could I make them even happier? It wasn't difficult to get to the bottom of this, though, because Zoo Tycoon lets you read your guests' minds telepathically. Thompson's gazelle looks overjoyed. Thompson's gazelle looks overjoyed. I can't see Thompson's gazelle. It's too crowded. I also can't see Thompson's gazelle. It's too crowded. Prairie Dog Cafe 1 is too crowded. This zoo is awfully crowded. I'm hungry. And then some people's minds are just, um, just blank. Clearly though, another Prairie Dog Cafe or two wouldn't hurt. So I built them all the way around to lighten up the load of the first one. People were happier and a few more guests flocked in, but it still just wasn't enough. Okay, now this is a difficult problem. How was I going to make the zoo seem less crowded without getting any more animals? And so I put on my thinking cap. My design, though compact and logistical, was crowding my guests. But if I increased the surface area for people to press their faces up to the glass and see the happiest gazelle, all within ten tiles, and then line up a bunch of prairie dog cafes around the outside, then I might be able to make even more people even happier. So I did it. And for the next few months, more and more people came into our zoo, drinking, eating, defecating, and sitting down, while they all got happier and happier from being near the swing set and staring at the happiest gazelle. At this point, though, I should probably confess that I actually had to keep replacing the gazelle on a yearly basis. One time in an alternate save file, the gazelle had died, and people in the zoo fled in droves, sad that the happiest gazelle was dead. Or if, God forbid, the gazelle got sick, I just, um, removed it. Don't worry about it. It's it's off in a better place now. Just keep staring at the replacement, and you'll forget about the original gazelle in no time. After all, they all look exactly alike. And so, at long last, after much trial and error, six years to be exact, we had reached the base game's zoo intake cap of 1,000 guests, all elbowing and pushing past one another, and yet still completely satisfied. But that's only the first part of my challenge. That was all child's play. As a professional gamer, I was able to hack into Zoo Tycoon's code and alter the zoo's maximum guests and delete all boundaries. Now there was no cap on guests. Everything that I did or changed was 100% legal, I swear to God. Don't go talking about it to anyone. I, well, I mean, what I mean to say is that I'm playing on Microsoft, of course. I mean my computer, I... It worked on my computer is what I'm trying to say. It, how many people could we get to feast their eyes upon this animal before I crashed my computer? And so I kept building up the zoo. I anteed up with the maximum advertising campaign to get everyone in town to come out. I slashed the prices again at all the prairie dog cafes, and I built more of them until we were just barely breaking even. I was determined to have the most popular zoo of all time. How far could we go, even if that meant we would kill our own profits? It was all for the worthwhile work of making even more guests even happier. And so thousands more rushed into our gates, the unwashed masses elbowing past one another to suck in through their eyes the pleasure juice of gazing at that pure, joyful, and immaculate gazelle. But still, even with thousands and thousands of guests rushing past one another, human nature began to show its ugly face once again. It's awfully crowded in this zoo. I'm hungry. It's too crowded in this zoo. I want to buy something. Consumerist. Picky. You know, quite frankly, maybe there are too many people here. Maybe, maybe there are too many people in this world. Maybe, maybe if I just released the gazelle, there wouldn't be so many of them left. Just kidding, I didn't release the gazelle, I left it in there. Just kidding again, I actually did release the gazelle, then I locked my guests into the park by building fences around the entrance. You didn't think this video was actually about building a successful zoo, did you? No, d don't be silly. Every game of Zoo Tycoon is about lulling your guests into a false sense of security while you amass a horde of dangerous exotic animals behind bars that you're secretly preparing to release upon the consumerist masses, bloated with unlimited money and cheeseburgers. And if you gaze upon that pure gazelle, freed from its glassy prison, untainted by the clawing capitalist hands that try to sell and lock away its sublime countenance, you just might see God. Anyway, I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. As always, a major thanks to my patrons who drink, eat, defecate, and sit down more than the average man, woman, boy, or girl. Until next time.